Well, good day to everyone. Um, my name is Derek Melber, and I will be your um, MC and presenter for the day, and um, for myself and everyone on the AD Solutions team here at Manage Engine, I want to extend a warm welcome to you, and thank you for your um, spending a little bit of time with us. I know it's very difficult to get away from work, even for a couple of minutes, so um, we, we want to thank you for your time and your commitment. Um, we feel that we have a very good webinar today, um, really giving you insight into a couple of different things that can go and help clean up Active Directory. And not only clean up Active Directory, but allow you to get better control over security in Active Directory as you move forward and maintain that security. Um, just to give you a couple of housekeeping tips, this is being recorded, um, so um, it will be available to you um, in an email link um, over the next couple of days. Um, if you do have any questions, please um, use the panel on the right-hand side to um, ask any of those questions um, that you might have. So um, please use that, and we will be um, um, going through those questions towards the end. Um, if, if it needs to be, um, we do have um, some excellent um, Active Directory gurus on the background helping me answer those questions. So most of those questions will be answered as we go through, and rarely do we need um, extra time for that. So please use the Q&A, and um, you will have your questions answered in line as we go through um, the um, webinar today. Um, to give you a little bit of information about me, Derek Melber, um, I am the technical evangelist for the Active Directory Solutions team here at Manage Engine. And what that means is that I have the opportunity to basically travel around the world helping organizations, helping administrators understand Active Directory better and also just um, hopefully secure and become more efficient with Active Directory and the things um, that you do. Um, we don't have a ton of time to spend together today, even though it's um, kind of an elongated webinar, um, but I want to leave you with some, some resources that you have that you can come and take advantage of. Um, if you go to our um, website, um, one resource that I want to point you to is our blogs. If you go to support and go to blogs, and then you can actually search on Active Directory. Um, you can see that we have quite a few blogs out here um, over different areas. Here's one on two-factor authentication. Um, this one happens to be about one of our products, but it's not always about product. Really, the whole goal of our blog is to communicate with you um, with different and bits and pieces that we feel that will be important for you to understand around Active Directory. Um, I also want to point you to our security hardening site. Again, if you go back to our main um, landing page, manageengine.com, and you hover over products, in the lower left-hand corner you see security hardening for Active Directory. <clears throat> this is an excellent website for you to come to to get really information that you'd have to scour the web for hours to get, and we've put it in one place for you. Towards the bottom of this page, you will see that we have categories of security around Active Directory, and we have given you different blogs and videos to help you secure those areas. So it is a one-stop shop for everything security in Active Directory. So this is an excellent resource for you to take advantage of. Um, finally, I want to point you to um, Another resource um, that is available um, to you, um, which is um, a white paper that we just wrote recently. So if you go to our main landing page, go to Products, Identity Password Management, um, and then go to Documents, you will see under White Papers that we have a white paper that it's relatively new, just a couple of months old, and I have the picture of it right here. And this is an excellent resource for you to go and learn about um, the current password policies that you have in Active Directory, the attacks that are going on with regard to Active Directory, and um, really the overall view on how you can increase security of Active Directory and um, then um, j just give you insight into that and how to secure them. Um, finally, um, let's talk about our world tour. Um, as you see there, we've already started our world tour for 2017, gone to multiple um, locations. I was in Germany last week um, in Munich, Stuttgart, and Dusseldorf, highly successful, um, very well attended um, seminars. 
Um, before that, I was in South um, Africa in Johannesburg. Um, and in the next um, couple of months, we'll be in Paris, multiple cities in Poland, and then um, Spain and Portugal. So um, this is just what, what we have on the, on the cusp. Um, we will be coming to some USA cities in June and possibly um, other months throughout the year. So please keep an eye out for our events page as well as emails that you're going to get through newsletters. And if we are near you at a um, seminar, I strongly encourage you to attend one of these. They're very energizing, very energetic, great information. Finally, my email address is right there at the top of the page. If you have any questions for anything we talk about today or anything AD, um, security of Windows, group policy, please email me. I'd be more than happy to try to tackle that for you or work with you to try to solve those issues that you have. I know a lot of people that know more than I do, and um, if I can't answer it, certainly we can tap them on the shoulder and get their input. So let's move on and discuss what I want to cover today. Um, really, the whole idea of this webinar is to discuss areas in Active Directory that I have found that administrators often don't know how to correctly configure, and therefore they have created issues in Active Directory. They've messed things up. So what I want to do is I want to help you. I want to guide you into do things properly and also how to go in and clean things up if they need to be cleaned up to get better control of what's going on in AD. So first of all, I want to talk about setting new user account passwords. And then we'll move on and talk about five different areas today. Now, when we're talking about new user account passwords, and we use the Microsoft way, we have severe limitations. And these severe limitations cause problems, okay? So first of all, if we go in and look at the whole idea of creating a new user account in Active Directory. So I'm gonna come over here to Active Directory Users Computers. I'm gonna go down to my Users Container. And I'm just gonna create a um, new user account, okay? So I'm going to come in here to users, right click, new user, okay? So when I come in here and I create a new user, um, let's say that I create a user called um, um, Molly. So I put in Molly, and then I get to the point about the password, which is what I want to focus on. Now, first of all, we've been using this interface for years, literally for 17 years. Some of you have, may have upgraded to the administrative console um, if you have a newer Active Directory environment, but many of you still use Active Directory users and computers. Now, when you are creating, let's say, 10 new user accounts, and you're going through and you have to right-click on this um, new user creation, and you have to input the password 10 times for 10 new users, what I have found is that many organizations still today use the same password for all new users. Now, let's discuss this just a minute. If I go in and I input the same password for all of my new users, <clears throat> and then I set the user must change password and next logon, and I finish. So here's my new user, Molly, and Molly now is created. Now typically what happens when I go in, I must also configure all of the group membership so I go to the group membership and I establish this. I go and I create all the account information and I set up Molly. Now, at this particular point, I have created an environment that potentially is insecure. Now, why is it insecure? Now, I typically at this point when I'm doing a live event, someone says, well, no, it's not insecure because you've set it to the user must change password and nest logon. Yes, that's true. However, <clears throat> when you as the administrator create new user accounts, it's typically for some new employee that is going to start in the near future. So if I create an account, I give it group membership, and I set a password that's been the same password for every new user over the last five years, well, that account is going to sit there until the new employee starts. So that means that any user in the organization that knew what the 
password was when their account was created could potentially log in as this account. So everyone could log in as this account, which is the security issue that I'm talking about. So what we need to do is we need to come up with better ways so that we can get control over this type of security configuration. Now ideally what we would want when we are back here and we're establishing a password for the user is we'd want a random password. Now Microsoft does have an API that can you can try to shove into Active Directory in Azure to generate random passwords, but I've heard nothing but horror stories about that. So I commend Microsoft in making the attempt but what my suggestion is to you is why not use a tool that's actually designed out of the box to do these types of things. So I can come in and create a single user and I can set here a random password with just a click. So what has potentially happened in your Active Directory environment because of the limitation of what Microsoft has put in into the operating system is you've had administrators now before you, maybe still today, that are creating accounts that are insecure because they don't have the random password option. And it is very difficult to track, even if I create 10 users, for each of them to have 10 different passwords. So it's easier, more convenient, but it certainly is not something that we want to implement in today's computing environment because it does nothing but create an insecure configuration, okay? And again, keep in mind that this checkbox right here, user must change password next logon, is not a security setting. It may seem like it is, but it doesn't protect the account until someone actually changes that particular password at the time that they log on, okay? So <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to take advantage of tools that allow us to do this random password generation. Now, I also want to point out the fact that Microsoft has a significant limitation in Active Directory users and computers for bulk user creation. It just doesn't exist. So why not use a tool that's designed to do bulk user creation, right? Create bulk users. And when you create the bulk users, you simply import from <coughs> A, a CSV file that you create and now what you have is the ability to import accounts into Active Directory and these accounts can have random passwords as well. So it, not only is it a single user that can be created with a random password, it can be bulk users that are created with random passwords. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. So go clean this up. Stop using the same password and use random passwords. All right, let's move on to our second tip. Setting group membership during new user account creation. So what I want to point out here is often using Active Directory users and computers, we might miss a group. We might misconfigure a group. We don't have templates inside of Active Directory users and computers. So when I come back here to Active Directory users and computers and I create a new user like Molly, I then have to go in and add Molly to the groups. Well, if I have 10 different users that I'm creating and 10 different departments, this is a lot of overhead. So what Microsoft has created is they've created this workaround so that I can create a finance user template and put the user in finance and then right click copy it or I can go and copy let's say um, Patsy's information and now the new user that I copy to has all the groups. Everyone that's on this webinar knows that that has created issues in your organization. It typically provides too much access because the user, the manager, that told you to copy Patsy has really no idea what groups Patsy is part of. So when you copy Patsy to a new employee, the new employee has too many groups that they're part of. And they now have access to resources they shouldn't have access to. You as the administrator, you're just following protocol. You don't know that 
the new user should or shouldn't have access to all of this stuff. So you just copy Patsy, make it the new user, and you're good to go. But this is not good security practice. It's a mess. And what people are doing in Active Directory is creating this type of a mess. So what my suggestion is, is why not when you create a single user at the time of creation, you set the group membership? Or even better, why not use something like a user creation template? And when I create a user creation template, during the template, I am specifying which group based on the template the user should be part of. So the idea is that you can now go in and when you create new users, you first of all can do it in bulk. You can specify a template. And the template will make the user part of the correct groups when you create the user account. Very, very powerful. Okay? So instead of creating issues, just fix the problem by using the right tool. Now, we also have another great feature when you create users called basically a new user rule, creation rule. The creation rules allow you to basically specify different areas of what the user has configured. So instead of just relying on the template, you now can rely, or let's say, a description, or you can rely on a title. And based on the title, you can actually perform actions to put users in the correct groups. So not only do you have templates that ensure correct membership, you now can have creation rules based on AD attributes that'll put the user inside of the correct group. So these are things that we have um, really worked on. We listen to our customers and say, what are you looking for? And these are two of the most important things when it comes to group membership during user creation is efficient using templates, and second of all, dynamic group membership based on creation rules. And this gives you a tremendous power over which groups the user is going to be a part of so that you can make sure that the user is in the right location when you set them up. All right? Excellent. Third, tracking the use of delegated privileges. Now, delegated privileges is kind of, in my opinion, a generic term. So here's what I want to do. I want to, first of all, walk you through how privileges are granted. Inside of Active Directory, there are three primary ways that privileges are granted. Group membership, permissions, and user rights. All right, let me show you what each of those look like. Here in Active Directory, if I want to grant Patsy a privilege, I can put Patsy inside of a group. So I could add Patsy to the domain admins group, as you see here. Okay? So this is how I can grant users privileges. Second of all, I can do privileges based on access control lists. So I could go into my file system and I could go to a access control list right, here's the ACL, and I could add a user to this. Third, I could go into <clears throat> user rights, right, and I could establish user rights for users and or groups, and now I could give the ability to change the time, back up information, log on locally. I can do a variety of different things through user rights. These are the three primary ways that privileges are granted, are delegated. Now, if I want to track the use of these privileges, if I use Microsoft, well, I'm going to have to go in and set up auditing, right? So if I go look at auditing and what's set up here, 
<clears throat> I could set up auditing. After auditing is set up, and I want to track things, to look at the tracking that's going on, I go into Event Viewer, and I go to the security log. And I have 147,000 events that I'm going to have to sift through to try to track when someone used a privilege. Now, I hope I don't need to convince you that this is a very bad interface. This is a very bad tool to try to do what you're trying to do, which is track privilege use. There's no reporting, right? There's no report option anywhere in here. The filtering is abysmal, and we lose information. I mean, you got to look at right now, um, today's the 11th at 11.20. My log only goes back to the 10th. It's 24 hours. So what if I want to look beyond 24 hours? I can't report on this. So we really get into um, an issue where we can't use the event viewer to track use. However, with the right tool, we can track the use. So let me show you how you can actually leverage this type of information. With the right tool in place, like AD Audit Plus, I can have reports, and all of these reports that I'm going to show you are out of the box, where now I can go in and look at all Active Directory changes of the last 24 hours. Right here, Molly was password last set. I can look at all changes by the user. So James Bond doesn't really do that much work, but Derek does. So I want to go in and see what Derek has done in the last 24 hours, and this is a list of what all of my Derek account has done in AD over the last 24 hours. I can also look at logons. I can look at Derek's logon activity. So I could come in here and say, all right, I want to know when Derek was accessing the network, right? So here's when Derek has logged on over the last 24, uh, this one's 24 hours. I can also look over the last, let's say, year for Derek. So the idea is that with the right tool, you can actually track this type of behavior for what's going on. I can also look at log on failures. I can also look at other types of access. So group policy, right? If I want to look at group policy management, I could look at recently created, uh, look at recently created GPOs. And I can look at who created them right here. This is privileged user monitoring. And not only do I want to monitor when things are changing, I potentially want to actually alert. For example, let's say that someone goes into Active Directory and they decide to modify in some way a service account. Don't you want to be alerted with that change? This obviously requires some level of privilege. So why not have the ability, right here as you see, the account was changed. Why not have an alert set up for this? So you not only can track the activities, you can set up real-time alerting to make sure that you <clears throat> know what's going on. And it's for anything. Anything that is changing in Active Directory, you can set up the reports and therefore the alerts, right? User management, recently created users. I should have Molly here. I created Molly today. I want to know about group changes, group management, right? I want to know about OUs, computers, GPOs, other configurations. It's all right here. With a single click, you can get reports to track the behavior of those users in your environment which have privileges. Extremely, extremely powerful. So you now can have the ability to go in. And I see the questions coming up, right, as, as we go through. You guys are asking about what about disabled accounts? What about accounts that are locked? It doesn't matter. Anything in Active Directory, you now can run a report on who made that change, tracking privilege use, okay? <clears throat> group membership changes. Group membership changes, I've seen a variety of different things, a, a huge variety of different things. 
And what I overall see is that because of the way that Microsoft has basically created Active Directory, we have an issue with creating messes because we grant too much group membership. Now, you can give others group membership changing capabilities through delegation. You can use PowerShell and scripting to modify group membership. But if I delegate to someone in Active Directory the ability to change group membership, let me show you where that is. I'm going to come back here to Active Directory. I'm going to pick an OU. I'm going to run the delegate control. I can go in here and say, all right, I want to give this to my help desk. And I want to give them the ability to modify the membership of a group right here. This is what I'm talking about. This is delegation. If I grant this over the HROU, any group in here who I grant that to can modify the membership. They can come in here, they can go to members, and they can modify this. This is the whole point. But what if they make a mistake? What if they go in through delegation? Or what if you create a PowerShell script or commandlet that modifies group membership? How do you know if it's correct? I mean, in all reality, how do you know if what they do is correct? Right? I mean, you can use the event viewer to track the changes, but first of all, it's too late. The change is already made. There's no reporting in Event Viewer. There's no granular alerting in Event Viewer. So there's real, no real way to know about this. But what if you could actually do it correctly the way that you want to do it so you know every change that's occurring and you know it's correct? Let me show you a two-step method. One is delegation. This delegation is inside of AD Manager Plus. This delegation allows you to go in and basically allow someone to change group membership. So right here, if I go to group management, right, they can modify a single group, right? So you give them the ability to modify the group, right? Now, once you've given the ability to modify that group, the whole idea inside of delegation is you're going to give that to someone. You're going to delegate that to someone. Excellent. What if I delegate to Patsy the ability to change group membership? Excellent. All right. I do that. But what if I don't really want Patsy to do it without me knowing what she's doing? Not a problem. I set up workflow. And workflow has a requester and an executor. Now, there, there's more roles that can happen, right? I can have a reviewer or approver, but at the core, I want someone to request it, Patsy, and I want someone to review it and execute it, you the administrator. So now what you can do is you can establish workflow so that no matter who is trying to change group membership, you are verifying that the group members are correct before it's put into Active Directory. Also, I can track this behavior now. Because I'm using the suite of Manage Engine AD tools, now I can go in and I can run reports of group changes, right? recently modified groups, and now I know exactly what is changing in my environment. So the whole idea is that I want to be able to use workflow for group membership changes for a variety of reasons. I want to verify, I want to ensure correctness, and I want to report, and I also potentially want to set up alerts so that when things change, I am being notified so that I know my environment. This this whole point is to know your environment. Without this, really you have the potential of huge disastrous problems and we all know about those huge, huge disastrous problems. Every single one of us knows that you have administrators that you work with that aren't doing group membership changes correctly. If they aren't modifying the group membership correctly, then 
you really don't know what's going on. Okay? Excellent. Our last tip. This one, I want you, I'm going to suggest, not want, I'm going to suggest that as soon as we are done, you now can go in and you can clean this up in Active Directory. I find that most admins, once I show this to them, they're a little scared. They're scared of what they don't know. Now, I want you, as soon as we're done with this webinar, to go identify all users that have never logged on. Now, how are you going to do that? Or why are you going to do that? Let's talk about the why first. Well, remember when we created those user accounts and we gave every user the same password? If a user has never logged on, that means that the password that you've been using for all new users is still the same and in place. That means that anyone now can go in and log on as any account that's never logged in because they know what that password is. Everyone knows the new user account password. And as I said, when we created those new users, you granted them access to group membership. The groups have access to resources. Let's say you create a new finance user. That finance user never started. They never, they, they for some reason changed to a different job. But you didn't delete the account. So that means you have a user account in Active Directory that has never logged on, has the, the same password that everyone knows, and they have access to resources. Tell me that's not scary. Now, how do we report on this? Well, if I go into Active Directory users and computers, and I try to look at a report of users that have never logged on, how do I do this? Well, Microsoft doesn't provide you with this. How would you do it in PowerShell? Well, you're going to have to do a little research. You're going to have to go through and make sure that you have the right syntax to get the report. Now, inside of AD users and computers, it's actually not that difficult. You'll see here that I've used a saved query. Never logged on users, and here they are. Now, I had to customize this, right? Let me show you what it looks like. I went in and I defined the query. I went to advanced, um, <clears throat> custom search, and I typed this in, okay? So it's not horrible. But every time that I want to get a list of users that have never logged on, I have to right-click and refresh. There is no option here to schedule this, right? I mean, how am I going to get this in a report also? I mean, I, I can export the list. That's not very good, though. So, yes, I can do it in Active Directory, but it's not giving me the solution that I want. But if I go into a tool that's designed to do this, I can get from AD Manager Plus a report of users that have never logged on. From here, I can see when they were created, the account status, and quickly, I can produce a report of this. If I want this report done daily, I can schedule it. The whole point of getting information out of Active Directory is being able to leverage it efficiently. So with this, you now can get a listing of all users that have never logged on, and then right from this interface, right, I can go and I can control the accounts, right? Enable, disable the users. I can disable all of the users that have never logged on from this interface, from this report. Very powerful. Now, I don't want you to go through this much effort. What I want you to do is I want you to set up an automation. I want you to set up an automation that basically says when, every morning at 4 o'clock, I want you to set up a users that have never logged in automation in such a way that you're going to disable the user. I mean, why not run it every day and disable users that have never logged on or run it every week or every month? So what I'm trying to suggest to you is because of the way that Microsoft created the operating system and the tools, we have administrators, potentially ourselves if we look in the mirror, 
that have created kind of a mess. You can get control of this by automating reports, automating actions that you now can get control of these things. And it's not just for accounts that haven't logged on. What we're talking about is a variety of different things, right? From setting up the password to group membership, workflow, making sure it's correct, controlling delegated privileges. It's everything. And I only have time to go over five. If you go to our blog, you'll see tons more. If you come to our seminars, you'll see tons more. Really what we do in the AD Solutions team here at Manage Engine is we try to develop solutions for you, the administrator, that make you extremely efficient, to give you solutions that allow you to see things in Active Directory, which are nearly important, impossible to see otherwise, to give you control over security of Active Directory when you create new users, when you modify things in Active Directory. This is is really what we're all about okay so this comes to the conclusion of our webinar for today I've seen a ton of questions come through and I want to thank my my colleagues for answering those questions if for some reason your question was not answered my email is right there okay I, all the questions that I've seen have come through have been answered so I think everything's been answered but if you have a question please email me I, I'm more than willing I I accept all emails. Please email our events team. If you know the email of anyone else on the AD Solutions team, email them. We take pride in answering emails. We take pride in that you trust us enough to send us that email. As a summary, please go in and clean up Active Directory. Change the way that you do things so that you can get better control over Active Directory. We at the Manage Engine team for the AD Solutions. Thank you for your time today. Um, hopefully, um, we do have some more webinars coming up and we do have some seminars coming up in late 2017. Please, come to our webinars, come to our blog, email us, communicate with us. We really appreciate it. We tr we, we, we're thankful that you trust us. Um, and for I'm going to let you get back to work. Um, this is Derek Melber thanking you. For the entire AD Solutions team, we thank you. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.